Hi guys, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Today is my last book haul of 2017. And most of you guys will probably think that these are all the books that I've gotten for Christmas. No, I haven't. Well, if you consider me being Santa and me buying books over the past couple of months and saving them up for a video, then yes, I got this all for Christmas. But if you were expecting for me opening my gifts or showing you guys my gifts for the actual Christmas, which happened yesterday, that's a no. So I'm gonna talk to you guys about 14 books that I've bought in the past three months but that I just haven't hauled yet and I really want to do it before the end of the year because I bought these books in 2017, not in 2018. So before I'm gonna show you guys all the good books that I received, you guys can follow me on all of my different social media pages. Of course, I have Goodreads, Snapchat, Instagram, plus an email address. Links to all of my social media pages will be in the description bar down below so you can click that for all the good information. I'm gonna gonna try and keep this video a little bit short and with some books I don't even know what they're about so I can't even tell it to you guys myself but you can always look it up on Goodreads and read the synopsis. Let's start with book number one and I don't have the physical copy with me. I left it in my dorm. Unfortunate but I cannot bring all my books with me and that is A Skinful of Shadows by Frances Hardinge and I'm showing it on my phone because I mean <gasps> look at that cover or I can say look at that cover it is so beautiful and that is what initially intrigued me to buy it just because the cover looked gorgeous and I know the author of this book because she wrote The Lie Tree which is very popular I've seen it in the UK in a bookstore and it looked gorgeous it has won a really big prize I think and this book just seemed really interesting it had to do with spirits and controlling your body and it's about this girl who has let in a spirit or ghost and she needs to survive it something like that again like I said I don't know too much about all these books but I'm very intrigued by this and I cannot wait to pick it up I mean the author seems really really good so I'm excited to see what I'll think of this book. Next up, I bought Wonder by RJ Palacio and I bought this at the end of August. I distinctly remember it. It was on the 31st of August and I bought this with Joni. She is an awesome bookstagrammer. I will leave her link to her bookstagram in the description down below as well. She makes awesome pictures and she absolutely loved this book. I bought this in a gorgeous bookstore in Maastricht, which is a really big city in the south of the Netherlands. And this is about a kid who has a deformed face and you follow his story from that point on. You can kind of see it from the cover. Plus the movie just came out in the cinemas. I don't know if it came out in the cinema in the Netherlands though. Like I haven't really seen it, but I've been meaning to pick it up. And I think this is gonna be my next read just because it's also short. It's like 300 pages. So I really wanna see what all the hype is about. Next up, another book that I bought in August with another friend in Eindhoven where she lives. And that is Dare to Fall by Estelle Muscami, Muscam. I really don't know how to pronounce this last name. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. I started the first chapter and I liked it. Um, I just wasn't really, really feeling it back then, but I initially bought it for the cover. It's really a theme with all of these books, by the way. I definitely look at covers. Don't judge a book by its cover, I know, but we all do, secretly or not secretly, like I do. But I feel like this is supposed to be a really good um, contemporary with a lot more depth to it than just like romance or something like that. I do believe that there is romance in this. Look up on Goodreads for the full synopsis. Yay! Next up I have Release by Patrick Ness and this cover is so interesting like it's actually this is the, like this is the picture but they turn it around and I think it looks so cool. Um, again what is this book about? I don't really know. I know that's contemporary. I know that it's Patrick Ness, but there's probably also going to be some sort of element to it that's going to be a little twist on contemporary. I don't think it's magical realism. I know that this came out earlier in the UK than it did in the US and um, it had gotten like really good reviews and that's all that I needed to know. This one is also really short. I think that this was even like under, yeah, it's like around 250 pages. So if I need a quick book, I'm definitely gonna pick up this one because I think it will be a quick read. Then I pre-ordered a book and I this is the second in I think a duology or a trilogy. I don't really know what it's gonna be. Um, I pre-ordered the book and I haven't even read the first one and it is God's Grave by Jay Kristoff. This is the sequel to Nevernight. The covers of these are again so pretty, but this is like a story about an assassin and I always really enjoy stories about assassins. I think that Nevernight is going to be a really awesome read and I've heard great things about God's Grave too so I needed to just get it for myself and uh, 
I love it. Then my next section in this book haul are going to be books that I received in my fairy loot boxes. I will uh, give you guys a link to my latest fairy loot unboxing. And the book that I received in my December box is Everless by Sarah Holland. And to give you guys a little bit of an idea, I'm going to read this, what's on the back. Blood is money, time is power, desire is treachery, treachery, don't know how to pronounce that. Welcome to Everless. It's basically about the rich, they can uh, live forever while the poor people have to drain themselves with the blood and they will die fairly quickly. Um, it sounds really good. It sounds like a mixture between a dystopian fantasy novel and I'm really excited. This one hasn't come out yet, which is really awesome. Um, that's why it's also kind of included in the box. It's kind of like an idea of time travel that you already got the book before anyone else. Blah, blah, blah. It just, uh, I think if I'm going to pick up another fantasy book, I will pick this one up next because it sounds really intriguing to me. I'm not too sure, but I think this one was the October book for Fairy Loot, and that is Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dao? Dao? I don't know. Again, how to pronounce her name, but this is like a story of how the evil queen in Snow White became the evil queen which sounds really good. It is a first book and I think a series. It's a Rise of the Empress novel. I don't know how many books are gonna be in this series. I think that if I wanna read something a little bit more evilly, you know, fantasy book, I'm definitely gonna pick up this one. Then there was also a second book in the October box and that is Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo. And I have gotten some cards in here as well. Um, but these are short stories in the Grisha universe. I've only read Shadow and Bone, but I really wanna continue on with the Grisha trilogy and these are are like all stories from that world so I think this is gonna be a really good book when I finish that series and that will be a very long time but this one also has an exclusive cover because on the usual cover this is like orange instead of red. I believe in the September box we got Wicked Like a Wildfire by Lana Popovic and the funny thing is that I have two dust jackets on this one. Look I'm gonna remove the dust jacket Hey, there's another one, which I thought was really, really funny. Again, like a fantasy novel. I think that Fairy Loot only can includes fantasy books in their boxes, um, or like dystopian ones as well. This was about like a magical family. That's all I know about it. I love the cover. It really intrigues me. It gives me a very like magical vibe and I can't wait to pick it up and see what this story is about because at the time that I read the synopsis I was like oh this sounds nice and then the last book that I have from like the fairy loot boxes is even the darkest stars by Heather Fawcett and this one has an exclusive cover as well the spine is a different color I don't know if wicked like a wildfire had like a different cover. I'm not too sure about that. Again, when I read the synopsis, I was very intrigued. I don't know what it's about. I think this girl has to travel through the mountains and it's a very dangerous conquest. That's all that I remember from it. I really do like love the books that Fairy Loot includes. I feel like they're a little bit more unique, like not as well known. Like I hadn't heard of this book before I gotten it in the Fairy Loot box. I just know that I really need to pick up the books that I get in my Fairy Loot boxes because I always kind of forget it. But it's also just since I've been going to uni, I haven't been reading as much. So yeah, that's a little bit of the problem. And then right now onto my last part of the book haul and I saved this part for last because I love it the most. And these are all Harry Potter themed books. As you probably all know, I love Harry Potter. And as you all know, you probably also love Harry Potter. Everyone loves Harry Potter. And in the past three months, they have come out with a lot of books. First off, I have A History of Magic. So this is not, I thought this was really going to be their study book, like A History of Magic, the book that they read in the books, in the movies. But this is, I, I, I don't really know how to explain it. It is the Spellbinding Companion for a unique exhibition at I think the British Library in London. It will have a lot of details from like the movies and the books in it. I have looked through it a little bit and I feel like when you read this you're gonna be fully immersed in the Harry Potter again and you're gonna in the Harry Potter, into the Harry Potter world again, and you're gonna know a lot more details than you already do. So I cannot wait to pick this one up. I know that you also have a paperback edition, but I've heard from people that the only difference between the paperback edition and the hardcover one is of course the cover underneath it, which is gorgeous. I will show it to you in a minute, but also that the paperback one has a little bit less information in it than this one. Not too sure about that, but I will show you guys underneath the dust jacket. 
This is so cool. I mean, look at that. That's awesome, right? It has a gorgeous snake on it. Oh, uh, this book is so pretty. I have Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the illustrated edition by Olivia Lomanek Gill. I have seen her illustrate one of these illustrations or maybe a couple of them and she used a very unique technique and it looked really awesome. I'm just gonna read this whenever I just feel like picking it up and looking at magical creatures. Like, I'm not really doing a good job in showing you guys, but if you want to see the full illustrations, you're just gonna have to buy the book yourself. I, I'm just so happy to have another Harry Potter book in my collection and I just cannot have enough of them. Plus, I've also never read Fantastic be somewhere to find the minute commander so I'm very excited to do so. Then my last two books are my I think my most favorite ones in this haul. First of all definitely Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban illustrated by Jim K. I haven't looked inside because I want the illustrations to be a surprise to me when I'm gonna read reread the book. I also don't know what illustrations are in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secret illustration illustrated edition yet because I haven't looked. I want it to be a surprise but I love this cover already so incredibly much and I cannot wait to reread it and look at the illustrations which will be inside this book. And then last but definitely not least I think this is one of the my favorite books that I got in this haul and that is Harry Potter Magical Places from the films Hogwarts Diagonally and Beyond and I also look through it a little bit and you can see all of this like information about like the three broomsticks the three broomstri broomsticks that is a hard word uh, the clock tower and the courtyard and you can see like film locations and it just makes me really happy to look through this and again I need to really sit for it and look through the book and just be fully emerged in the world again and it makes me feel so happy. So these plus one more are all of the books that I've gotten like received and collected over the past three months. It's a really big pile again but in 2018 I want to like slow down my book buying because I, I haven't read a lot of the books. I think that I have like around 70 books on my to be read pile and I need to start reading them before I'm gonna start buying more. But we all know that's probably like like not really gonna happen. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!